Whoa, sweet man cave. Thanks. Serious upgrade. How'd you pay for all this? I got a home equity line of credit from Figure. I was approved in five minutes and had funding in five days. Wow, that fast and easy? Yep. The application is 100% online, plus no out-of-pocket costs. Just fast access to the cash you need. How do I get started? Go to figure.com and get that serious upgrade. Figure Lending LLC, DBA Figure, Equal Opportunity Lender, NMLS 1717824. Terms and conditions apply. Visit figure.com for more information. For licensing information, go to www.nmlsconsumeraccess.org. Hey, it's Kaylee Cuoco for Priceline. Ready to go to your happy place for a happy price? Well, why didn't you say so? Just download the Priceline app right now and save up to 60% on hotels. So whether it's Cousin Kevin's Kazoo concert in Kansas City, go Kevin! Or Becky's Bachelorette Bash in Bermuda. You never have to miss a trip ever again. So download the Priceline app today. Your savings are waiting. Go to your happy place for a happy price. Go to your happy price, price line. Hi, friends, Robin here. So, you may have noticed that we are on a little hiatus between seasons three and seasons four. Don't worry, though, we are not leaving you. While you wait, we're revisiting some episodes from our previous three seasons. Ooh, ooh, and we also have. Where are they now videos on our social media channels that you can check out? So make sure you are following at Real Rob Hops and at editaud.io over on the Instagram. Now, sit back and relax and listen to, well, I'd say one of our favorite episodes, but that's just not true because we love all our guests. So sit back and enjoy an episode that deserves an encore. Oh, and we will be back with new episodes on Tuesday, March 19th. Mark your calendars or, hey, just follow us on the socials so you don't miss a minute of well-adjusting. Woo! Edit audio. I have a bit of a problem saying no to things. If you invite me to a party or a dinner, I'm going to bend over backwards to go, like backwards. There was a point when I first met Mary, who is self-described as indoorsy, where she was nearly in tears because I had us booked out every single night for two weeks solid. Poor Mary. I think I've always been an overscheduler because A, ain't nobody loves a party more than me, but really it's more because of B, which is that I was a bit of a loser in high school who didn't get invited to shit. Yes, I went to the movies on prom night. I'm saying it was about fear, and this insecurity extends itself to my work life. Last year was the first year I think I ever turned down work. My fears of turning down work include, but are not limited to, pissing someone off, worrying they'll never think to use me again, FOMO, fear that the job itself will turn into something spectacular that I miss out on, being poor, regretting not taking the job. I could go on and on, but None of this behavior has me choosing what's best for me. None of this behavior has me rationally thinking or strategically thinking. It just has me running around like a chicken with my head cut off. And sometimes I wonder, what would be available to me? What would show up in its place if I was able to say no? Hello, everyone. I'm Robin Hopkins, and this is Well Adjusting, where I talk to people about life stuff, but not in an NPR way. It's more like we're at the bar, having cocktails, getting into your business sort of way. It's it's giving drunk NPR. Oh, and producer Steph is here, too. Hello. Today we chat, well, working 9 to 5 and then 5 to 9 and, and sometimes 9 to 12. Hello, friends, and welcome back to season three of Well Adjusting. Woo! We are so glad to be back and with a pretty incredible kickoff episode, if I do say so myself. Today, we are talking to Ewan. He's a writer, a music journalist, and he never sits still. He writes because he loves it. He writes because he's not sure how he managed to get so successful so young, and he's afraid it could all fade away at any moment. So we had a lot to pick apart about working from a confident place versus working from panic. It is such a wonderful interview, and I definitely wanted to recruit him to be on our team of, well, other people who just don't sit still much. So, oh, 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 wait, wait, wait. Before we get to you, and I do want to take a quick moment to tell you folks at home that we are looking for new guests. 
If you've got a problem that you want to get into with us, just drop us an email at hello at editodd.io, or you can just DM me on any of the socials at Real Rob Hops, and you know we'll consider your story. Okay, now let's get to our newest pal, Ewan. I'm uh, Ewan Gledo. I'm a, I guess I'm a music journalist, although that that's me defining myself as that rather than what I'm actually paid to do these days. Uh, I am a music journalist, but I'm also a news journalist as well. And I also do podcasts and and all these strange little things that have kind of circulated for a couple of years. And it's it's why I'm kind of glad I'm here, because it's kind of nice to talk about not really feeling that I'm meant to be where I'm at at the moment. I've turned 23 now, you know. The spirit of youth has left me. <laughs> um, I'm gunning towards 30. And, and for what I've done since graduating so i mean i've I've done this for about four years now and it doesn't feel like it because i feel like i've done too much for someone my age but at the same time I feel like i've not done anything that is worth really saying well that's great i can kind of hang my hat on that and i think that's that's my issue i need to realign my focus really stop sort of giving into this imposter mm. syndrome thing that i've got going it's a strange it's a strange feeling well i'm like taking a deep breath because I feel like there's probably no one that has their earbuds in right now that doesn't feel a bit of imposter syndrome and something producer Steph and I've been talking a lot about lately because it's it is a difficult thing to to rid yourself of or to you know to to work through but like let's let's take it back a little bit before we kind of like delve into that and tell me you know you, you said you're a music journalist but you're a news journalist like how did you get where you are now and like delve in a little bit to I mean, I, I'm hesitant to use this word right off the bat, but that insecurity that's that's popping up for you. Yeah. So I think from quite early on when I graduated and so sort of, I got a job at my university as an intern, essentially. And while I was doing that full time, I took on another full time job, which was uh, freelancing for a tabloid, which I still work at, which is the Daily Star. So I would wake up at about half five in the morning. I would get two trains and a car to my work at the university and then I would start my shift with the Daily Star. I would do both of them on top of each other and then get home at about 7pm and then do my work for my website which is cult following until about 12pm. And I thought that at the time was manageable. (laughs) It clearly isn't. So after about four months of doing that I thought well it's going to be one or the other so I decided to go freelance. That's when sort of I had more time to work on my own stuff which I do and it's it's very handy. I feel very lucky and very privileged to even be on list where I'm getting albums or records yeah, or, yeah. or film where it's, even if it's just a couple of days before, it's like, you, you're trusting me with this. And then that feels like a big responsibility. Um, but as far as working from home goes, it's like, I'm my own editor and my own boss, yep. really, when it comes to the stuff I do for cult following, which I really do enjoy. Um, I've managed to convince some PR companies that it's more than just me writing for cult following because of the rate at which I publish things. Well, Ewan, I'm going to do something that I don't normally do, um, but I feel like it it calls for it. I want to just say something like that I'm observing in what you're saying just right out of the gate, like almost every other sentence is... I've managed to trick them. I've, <laughs> I've somehow, I've somehow, I've somehow gotten onto this mailing list. And and what I heard in what you said is an incredibly dedicated person who has excellent time management skills, who's driven. Like that's what I'm hearing. Like when I parse through your through your apologies. <laughs> I took this class in in acting school. It was like this whole movement class where we had to be in these like horrific unitards with like a white belt around our waist, which a girl in a midsection, you can just imagine how that feels. And we had to like dance around the room like absolute assholes, but we had to yell out, I have no apologies. And I feel like if I was with you, I would 100% be putting you in a ballet outfit right now and making you dance around yelling out, I have no apologies. I'm just curious, like, do you hear that in your speech? Yeah, a little bit, yeah. I think so. I think you're right. Is that yeah. is that just being British? <laughs> it's a quintessentially British thing, but at the same time, I think it's, like like you said there, it's a very driven sort of mentality, but I don't afford myself the time to sort of actually reflect on what I do. Because you're doing so much. Yeah, that's the thing. It's There's so much that I want to do, but then realise, you know, I'm, I'm only human. I can't do all of it. You cannot. But what I'll do is try and do it anyway and sort of collect mm. the remnants that come from 
focusing on... I mean, today I've got about six or seven things I can do. I know I can't do them all, but if I get three or four of them done, I'll feel a little bit satisfied, and it'll be, okay, well, half of them's done, and the other half goes onto the back burner for a later date. P.S., by the way, to our listeners, before we hit record, Ewan was telling us this was his day off. Just just, <laughs> yeah, just yeah, for yeah. context. Just for context. <laughs> I mean, I, I write out a little post-it note every morning, and on there I've got two albums and three movies left to sort, and a bit of reading to prep for something I'm doing this weekend, and also a note that I can't even read. So <laughs> it's a good collection of So that's of things definitely on the back burner, because we can't read that's, it. Yeah, I mean, there's some things where I'll put it on there, and then about four months later I'll get to it. I've got a Trello board with everything on it. Where yeah, you do. Singles, yeah, you do albums. with your Trello board. It's all color-coded. <laughs> well, he's getting so excited. All right, so but I have a question for you. Like I said, it's so clear you're driven. It's so clear you're passionate about what you're doing. The real question for me is, like, are you happy? Do you love what you're doing? Yeah. Because I'm trying to parse out, like, what's British? What's apologies? What's what you want to work on? And, and like, I sometimes have trouble saying no to things socially. And I think a lot of it comes from I don't like to disappoint people. And I also am always so thrilled to be invited. Like, the, the high yeah. school girl in me who was a loser is always like, I got invited. I got to go. So when you're parsing out your to-do list, your little notepad that you do every day, is everything that's on there all stuff you want to do? Yes. I think fundamentally, wh- when I started getting a bit more serious about the cult following thing and the music journalism, I always asked myself, is this going to be something that I'm going to find fun? Yeah. And it really helps how I sort of consider what I do in a day. At times, it's going to be obviously something that it's, it's a new release. I'm not too interested in it, like Metallica's new album, not my cup of tea, but I know it'll do well, so I'll get it done. The bulk of it, though, when I sort of look at what I want to do is what I would do paid or free. Obviously, I can't have that my way every time, but yeah, it's, yeah. broadly, it's, you know, I, I got to see my favourite band of all time on uh, last Friday. I saw Pulp, and then I saw Blur two days afterwards. And reviewing those, I would have done regardless. And yeah. it, it's just nice to see that there is a payoff, because I think a lot of a lot of what I do, because it's only me doing it for myself, so frequently is that there's a lot of self doubt involved where it's yeah ah, is the is that really what you meant to say in your writing is that really what you meant to to actually like say about something and I don't think that breakneck pace really helps me out where I'm doing six or seven things a day and also expecting myself to be at a high standard and yeah. quality so frequently sometimes I do just need to say right I need a day off. But that comes down to forward planning. That comes down to me getting ahead of myself, writing enough to cover the days I've got off, clicking publish, and then that's it. I can have a day off, have a nice coffee, and just sort of sit back and finish off succession finally. But (laughs) for me, it's all about balance. But then when I find that balance and find I've got myself a day off, the the usual outlets for me having sort of downtime are watching a movie or listening to an album. They're doing the things that you do for work. For work, yeah. I did want to ask a question that's related, but not related, which is like, you do a lot. Like you do know that. (laughs) Yeah. But do you celebrate? We talk about this a lot. Like Steph and I are horrible celebrators, but do you celebrate all the work that you're doing or when you do have moments where you like looking back and going, oh, I just finished this or I finished, or are you just right onto that next notepad? I think that the best way to answer that is, um, so I did three weeks in Italy for the Venice Film Festival which was a dream of mine. I never thought I'd do it. And I I met so many lovely people there. I had such an incredible time. And the second I got off the plane, I landed in Manchester. I thought, right, what's next? What am I doing next? And I didn't even process that. I'd just been in Italy for three weeks and eaten nothing but cheese. Um, (laughs) For me, it was a matter of, okay, that's done. That's the last full stop you'll write on Venice Film Festival. Get moving. What's next? And I don't think that's healthy because, I mean, I... So I took two weeks off in March to kind of just go around the country and go to gigs and sort of chill out a bit, really. And I just got back from a gig and we we went out for food afterwards. And my mate pointed it out. He said, it's you don't take the time to reflect on things and it's why you kind of seem to be spiralling. And I thought about that and I went, yeah, you're probably right. However, I've got a gig review to do now, so I don't really have time to (laughs) think about that. However, I'll put that on my to-do list for next week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'll be the one that gets kind of like dropped down. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Um, 
By the way, I do have to say, producer Steph is in like a cafe, so she's a little quieter <laughs> today, but I can see her nodding. Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I have the same problems. You know, I'm in Greece right now and I'm like, okay, remember you're in Greece. You know, like I, I feel very grateful for all of the things that I'm doing, but it also comes with this caveat that I'm also like, kind of guilty or like undeserving of the things like I'm like well why am I in Greece why do I get to go to Greece I'm only this amount of years or I only have this amount of work or I only make this amount of money or whatever the thing is there's always a thing so uh, I don't know I mean I'm trying to not even celebrate just like acknowledge the like cool things that are happening in life um or be present to them be in that moment that it's happening yeah but I'm horrific at it. <laughs> yeah, it's very difficult. I also find another marker point is when someone says, how are you doing? Like, well, you're doing a lot or something like that. I find myself downplaying it and being like, you know, it's all, it's all happening. Like I'm trying to just say nothingness to take up the least amount of space rather than be like, yeah, I'm so proud of all that's happening right now and all that's going on. So I guess that's both of us asking you the question of what do you think What do you think you could do to celebrate yourself more rather than just moving it to the to-do list? I think the the one thing I always do, and I remember I've done it once, it was... um, One thing I always do, I've done it once. (laughs) Well, yeah. (laughs) That's all of us. (laughs) I, I like the the one thing I've always enjoyed is just going out for a nice coffee. So I think if I can really treat myself to just kind of a nice atmosphere where I can sort of unwind away from work, because I think the, the issue I've got is that the place I live currently isn't actually near to any coffee shops or anything, actually. Um, the closest coffee you can get is from a petrol station, um, oh, and it's, it's that not That sounds nice. sad. If I wanted to celebrate everything I've done this year, I would need about two months off to sort of really think about everything, because I've got a lot of catching up to do in sort of the, the pace everything's gone at. I thought this would be where I'm at when I'm a much older person. Yeah. I, I set myself goals at the start of every year. Not like a New Year's resolution, but a kind of, here's the benchmark for where I should be. And now that I've hit that benchmark, instead of going, congratulations, really well done, let's have a breather, I kind of shift the goalposts. I move yeah. it up a bit further and a bit further because I think, one, I know it's doable, but two, I feel like switching off at that point is the wrong thing to do where, okay, you've achieved that, you've achieved I think last time I checked, it was my, my goal for the end of the year was 120,000 views at the end of the year. I've done 270,000, and instead of going, oh, congratulations, fantastic, that really shows growth for the site, I've gone, <laughs> why not 500,000? 500, 500,000 would be a yeah. really nice number. Yeah. And it's, and instead, so it's like, it, it, instead of acknowledging all these sort of achievements, I instead challenge myself again. Um, and I think that comes from kind of like the self doubt again, where it's kind of, you know, am I doing enough? Yes, but I can push myself further. And I remember the last time I did that, I think I was writing about 16 articles a day and I burnt myself Jeez out because that's Louise. expected. That's what that's happens. too much. Um, and I, I, I had a, a day off, kind of. I, I was forced into a day off because I burnt myself out so much I couldn't get out of bed. Um, mm. So I just kind of took that day as a kind of unique set of limits. And thankfully, I've managed to sort of maintain... A structure that helps uh, sort of I know when to stop working now rather than just powering through and being really tired yeah. I can always tell I can always tell when my confidence is gone because I will be up and down all the time just kind of walking back and forth between rooms not really knowing what I'm doing and then it clicks and it's kind of like okay that's enough work for the day just take the time out it's, yeah. it's been about finding new hobbies as a way to celebrate as well yes, um, yes, because obviously yes. film and music's kind of not off limits, but it's very hard to enjoy it because I, I love writing so much and I love what I do so much. It's very hard not to sort of start up again, fire up a Word document, start writing. But you know, if you don't, it's like you're a vessel, right? And if you're pouring everything out and you're not putting anything back in, what are you drawing on? What are the life exactly, experiences? Yeah. Like, you know, like the other podcast I work on, sometimes we'll go out to LA and we'll record, we'll bulk record a bunch of episodes. And I'm always saying to them, like, yes, we have time to do more than four. No, we should not do more than four. Because yeah. I will be out of references. I will be exhausted emotionally. And it's like no new life came in 
for any different perspective. And, you know, that's why I think it's nice to hear you say that you might be interested in exploring other hobbies. It doesn't necessarily have to mean that you go out and you start pottery. Like it doesn't have to mean that, but like maybe you start taking walks or maybe, you know, it might even be something like mindful, like meditation or something that slows you down because you are, it sounds like a person who's just going and going and going. Like you're like a little energizer bunny, like da, 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 (laughs) da, da, da. And you only stop when the battery's like, you know, as opposed to like planfully, as they say, as my daughter's teachers would say, let's be planful, you know, planfully putting something in place. Like today's a day off. Like, I'd love to hear you say, you know what, I'm going to go take a 45 minute walk, or I'm going to like ride a bike, or I'm going to actually drive an hour to a cool coffee shop because you could easily get more of a long-term burnout. Like so far you've been able to like shake it off fairly quickly and get back to it, but you could you know, you, you're like an athlete who is susceptible to overuse injuries and yeah. those can be career ending injuries. And it's like, if you think about that from like a creative perspective, you could burn yourself out to a point where you lose the thing you love. You know what? It's, it's funny you should mention that I actually wrote that because I journal every day just to kind of keep track of where I'm at. And, and there's a, there's a footballer called Deli Alley and he was a prodigy when he was in his youth at Tottenham. And now he's not so good, was hit with loads of injuries and it's kind of seen as a bit of a joke, unfortunately, which is a bit harsh. But I remember writing once, don't be the deli alley of writing. And I thought, oh, right, okay. I need to sort of either steady myself or get better and not be kind of... I think that's the issue I've got as well, is that having done all of this at 23, uh, what do I do to top that? It's, you know, it's a very big worry that I've kind of peaked too soon. So what do you think is like the thing that you're looking to change? Is it having more time off? Is it doing the same amount of work, but only this kind of work? Is it putting more time into friendships? Like, what is the thing that you're looking to change if you had like one or two? So so my perspective for the last six months has been, I've got X amount of articles going out on a day. If I can write them in advance, that gives me a day off, if that makes sense for it. So I've got Mm -hmm. seven articles out today. They're all written. I wrote them last month, but it's done, and I don't have to sort of scrabble to get it last minute. In my ideal sort of workflow, I guess, would be to have a week written out in advance so I don't have to worry about it and then can plan for the future, but it also gives me the flexibility to have time off. It doesn't change the amount of work that I have, which I think I do need to look into, (laughs) But it does give me that breathing space. I remember I managed it in January for a bit just to trial it, where I wrote out a week worth of work over the course of December, little extra bits and pieces to put out in January. And I took that week off as a kind of, you've got the chance to do some work, great, do it. But there was one day where I just kind of thought, you know, I'll not do anything today. I'll pop and have a coffee, go and see a film. And then I got back, did one bit of work. Because it was something that I just, in the spur of the moment, thought I would like to write about that now, rather than having the pressure of a deadline. But I do like the pressure of deadlines. I think that's why I want X amount out on a day. I think the ideal sort of aim for me is to have more time off. Well, I think you did just say two things that you want to work on. I think that's good to highlight them. And one was to try to be a little more a little more critical in what you take in. Like, doesn't mean like you're getting rid of three out of four articles, but maybe one of 10, you're like, I don't actually need to do that one Mm. because that might free you up for those random things that pop up that you're like, oh, I really do want to do that. That would be fun for my soul. And then you identified that you do want to be planful in making sure that you have time off like vacation time. I mean, I'd love to see you have it be a weekly thing so that there's at least one full day off. And and the bossy part of me also wants to say, I'd love to see you build in self-care however that looks for you. I would go on walks after work, but then I would feel so guilty about not doing work that I stopped doing it, which is a silly sort of cycle to put yourself through. And it's it's unhealthy, you, and that's the thing that's important to know is like then you're not taking care of yourself physically. I I just have to say like, you and first of all, I just have to say thank you so much for this conversation because like I'm, I'm relating to this so strongly and it's something that I have been struggling through for years and years and years. I've talked about this ad nauseum as well. It's like I'm currently doing the artist way and I started it solely to start to enjoy and to try to be in the moments, like to be in my life. And many things have happened in that process. My work output didn't change. 
But guess what? My relationship to it did, and I'm nowhere near as frantic. I'm nowhere near as bunged up. Like that image you have of you pacing, like that's my insides all the time. And that has slowed down so much. You know, I've become more serene. I've become kinder to my family. Like all these byproducts happened that were probably far more necessary than me enjoying my art, (laughs) to be truthful. Yeah. I mean, I'd be the first person to admit that when I'm kind of burnt out or tired, I am awful, terrible. When I'm sort of really exhausted and I just kind of don't communicate that. I mean, there'll there'll be days at a time where I just don't reply to text messages, meeting up with friends and stuff, because I'm just too tired. I've got my focus elsewhere. And it's very difficult to sort of get back in the in the zone where I'm being sociable because yeah. I've used up all that energy on something that could have waited, which you know isn't. Which, isn't by the, the way, best. there's a real there's a real uh, measurable quantity of of something that's lost to you in that. Oh yeah, like friendships, it's, relationships. Yeah. I think the the worst it got. I was actually on a date, and I excused myself just so I could oh, go and no. check my emails because I wanted to see if an album had come through. <laughs> um, I mean, on reflection, that was you know not a nice thing to do, but I would have done that to anyone. I, I could have been at a family gathering, be like, okay, yeah, two seconds. I remember going to a festival, and it was about half ten at night, and I was replying to work emails on my phone while the live band was on. Um, but it's it's gotten a lot more manageable now, where I'm not checking my phone all the time because, to be honest, I, I don't like using my phone anymore. So I tend to just put it on my desk drawer and kind of forget about it. Which is nice, actually. It feels quite liberating to not be connected yeah. to sort of social media all the time. Which is, I've always said to my friends, if I didn't have to use it for work, I wouldn't at all. I'd be so off grid. Oh my god, I know. I would only have a Facebook account to stalk people I went to high school with. Oh yeah, Without just to doubt. see how they're doing. I feel like this could be like the things we're talking about. Those are like triage. Those are like, this is what maybe I should look on immediately. But I do think there's like a long-term conversation that I don't think you can talk about confidence and how things land if you're in a frantic place. So I think the triage is really good. But I think the long-term conversation is about expectations. Everything you do won't be perfect. Every piece like, you know, I'm I'm now doing an essay a week on Substack and some I'm like, well... And then, and then it's and then I put yeah. it out. And my essay a week, it felt like a lot to me. But now I'm feeling all the kinds of shame because you're like, I'm doing 17 today, um, <laughs> you know. But like that confidence, that calmness, that like knowing you're in the right place and trusting yourself and, and believing in yourself, that's going to come over time. And, and yeah. some of it's going to come from settling into yourself, and some of it's going to come from celebrating yourself. Because without the celebration, how do you grow and build confidence if you never acknowledged all the things you did that were wonderful? I don't think it's possible. No, you're right. And it's, I think the, the one thing I can give myself is that I can see when I'm writing that my writing has improved from where it was last year or the year before. That's the, wonderful. The, the issue that causes is I'll look at something I wrote a year ago. What, what, what was this? Why is there a full stop there? <laughs> I'll take this down. What's this, this sentence sucks. even mean? But I definitely need to take the time to actually consider what i'm doing and, and how it's going you know i've i did a review of that new evil dead movie and usually the film review stuff doesn't really do that well i do it because i i kind of got my start in film journalism so that's it's just fun to do it and that did eleven thousand views and i was like okay that wasn't expecting that but it's there so something must have clicked with someone several times over and then that's that's kind of what keeps me going is those little things i need to think about where it's just yeah. even even if i don't analyze why it's worked just appreciating that it yeah. has worked i remember somebody asked me ages ago it's like who who do you write for is there somebody that you have in mind when you write and it's yeah it's me i write for myself and i think that was the most important switch for me if i'm writing for myself i'm writing about what i really think it's what i would want to hear well that's your voice exactly that and that's what you need to be true to yes without a doubt i've, I've never thankfully written anything where i've thought i'm not happy with that doesn't sound like me, or that's not what I think. I remember I interviewed a musician and then reviewed his album afterwards. He was lovely. Couldn't have asked for a nicer person to interview. Didn't care for his album. I'm not going to sort of muddy the waters with a nice review of his album after speaking to him. That would be, it would be disingenuine. And I think 100% of people are not going to like my work. But that's right. it's all about making sure that what I'm writing is, I'm happy with it. And yeah. I think more and more, I'm getting to that stage. I'm just not, 
accepting or actually analyzing that as much as I should. Well, I think you're hitting on something that's, you know, the the privilege of doing this kind of work is that you're looking inward a lot yeah, because you're putting something out that's a reflection of you in some way. And that's wonderful. And, and I think all the pieces that you have in place about, you know, being driven and, and, you know, you love a, a spreadsheet, like those are all great things that help you because this business can, you are also left with yourself. Yeah. And that can really lend itself to all the confidence stuff that we're talking about. It's like when you said that sentence of like, if I can say one thing, I can say that my writing has improved. But then you finished the sentence with something that was sort of negative about like, but I don't want to go back, whatever. What if the sentence just ended and I can see that my work has improved? And like experimenting with like gratitude journals or, you know, like I know people who at the end of the night do an inventory of all the great things they did. Just experimenting with what lands for you, what works for you, what helps you step into a confident space. Because the work is here, the talent is here, the drive is here, the organization is here. All the pieces are here and they're all already working. It's really just you feeling it. And I think you you already have the habit of reflecting. I mean, every day you said that you write a post-it note. What if you just added something that was like, what did I do yesterday that I'm proud of? Yeah, I'd love that. I think that's what I need to change, yeah, because I've got this, and I'm writing this every day, but I'll write on the morning and not the evening. So I'll write down sort of what I've got planned for the day and what I'm feeling and how I'm feeling about it, and then... At the end of the day, I don't write about how it made me feel. I'm just kind of expecting yeah. emotions that are going to pop up in the next day. And that creates a very cyclical problem where I'm constantly in this saying, well, you need to finish this and you need to do that. Yeah. Rather than you actually finish that and you also did this and prepped this. Well, and you know what you can do too is like in the, t- I'm a to-do lister as well, but I buried in my, in my running to-do list, I buried two things in there that were from the artist way. One was like, you know, there's that whole tapping thing about positivity. So I, I like buried that in the to-do list. And then I buried another one that was like, check in with your body and see how you're feeling right now. Because I realized that I don't like, once I start my day, it does not even occur to me to do wellness. Like, it's oh, just yeah. like, no, I'm no, like, no. I'm, a, I'm like a woman on a mission. So I was like, oh, well, let me just put it in the to-do list. I know I'm checking it throughout my day. You could bury a thing in the, in your to-do list that says, uh, say one nice thing about yourself and yeah. make it the fifth thing in your list. So you've checked off three things and then you have to say one. And you're like, oh, those moments really make changes. I, I see such a significant difference from stopping and taking stock. Yeah. Because, I mean, it's it's like you said about wellness there. I don't know if you've noticed that I've been sipping from a, a two-liter bottle of still water. Yeah, it is pretty giant. It's it's huge, but I'm also like, if it's out of sight, it's out of my mind and I'll forget yeah. about it. I, I would sometimes write down water or shower because I would forget to do it because I'm that fixated on work. And it's, yeah. that's not, that's not a good way to do it. Yeah. I wanted to say there's like a way to like dabble your toes. I'm terrible at taking time off work. I'm literally in Mykonos on the ocean right now. And I'm, what am I doing? Like, it's <laughs> and fine. She's working. And I, I love my job too. And I think that's part of the problem is I'm happy to do this. Like, I'm happy to be yeah. here. I love this conversation. I'm really excited for this episode. You know, that's part of it. But there is a flip side, at least that people tell me. <laughs> yes. Um, and I'm trying to get better at realizing that. But I think what's helpful for me to know is I can sort of like dip a toe in. So I will be like, you know, I remember the first time I said like an autoresponder on my email being like, I'm sorry, I'm not available today. I literally had a panic attack. <laughs> And I was still available and I was still checking my phone. I just was like freaking out that like something bad would happen. And now it's like I set mine for this week. I still check my email. I still get all my emails. I'm just like it makes other people aware of the boundary that I've set so that I don't have to reinforce it. Like it's already there. Yeah. Do do you think, I mean, because we've got phones, because we're on the internet all the time, do you think there's an expectation where we've got to reply straight away? (laughs) Yes. I mean, we obviously don't, but there is the expectation from certain parties yep. to to get back to them straight away when it's just not feasible sometimes. Oh, yeah. Do you yeah. have an ability to maybe get like a separate phone just for your friends and your own shit? That's interesting. I was thinking that, yeah. If I check my phone now, it's a mixture of 
a lot of work emails and just people talking to me just about football and stuff, which is a mix that isn't good. I did actually manage to get off of some social medias. I just thought, get rid of it. You're not using it for work and you're not using it for yourself, so why bother? Yeah. But I, I do like to think I'm doing what I set out to do. I remember I was halfway through second year studying journalism and I had no intention of being a journalist after a year and a half of studying it. And then I read Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas and thought if I can get anywhere close to doing what that did for me for someone else, mm-hmm. then that's brilliant. I'll never know if my work has done that for someone else, but I will. I know I won't if I stop doing it. So I'm very happy to keep going at the level I'm at now, knowing that it'll get better, knowing that I can, after this conversation, definitely improve what I'm doing and making it not not only healthier, but a lot more fun to do, which I think is That's the it. most important thing, yeah. That's it. Keep going. Don't stop. Just just be healthier as you do it. Yeah. And I just want to see you take part of today off. That's that's yeah. where I want you yeah. to start. And then I want you to bury things in your to-do list. I'll go for a walk as soon as this is finished. I will go for a, a solid hour's walk. I love there's, this. There's a nice little place I used to walk to where it was just a, a field that just happened to have a bench looking at it, and it was just little sheep. And that was it. And I would sit there, and I would just sit and listen to music for about 10, 15 minutes, not check my phone, just sort of sit and listen, and then I would walk back home. And that, that for me, was about an hour, which was it when it's sunny. Oh, it's lovely, really nice. Yeah, I'll do that. I'll do that. And, like, thinking about those things as things that are, like, adding to you and adding to your voice and adding to your work, you know, instead of taking away. Sometimes I always feel like guilty for like going to a show or something but really especially when you make things that are like related to art or self-expression or you know looking inward those are the things that help define your voice and help you know you make ties between things in your life that other people relate to that are in the end what like makes your work strong too so seeing them as valuable instead of guilt I think can always be like a nice reframe when you feel like you don't have the time it's always good to have that break as well, where I mean, it's like, even if it's just going to the pub for a few drinks. Yeah. We love a pub. We love a pub. Not even if, especially. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to invite me and Steph over. We're going to come to a pub. We're going to have 4,000 drinks, and we're going to continue talking about this for like seven more of hours. Because I, I think we got lots we'll to say. We'll all check oh, our yeah. emails at least 15 times within that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Thank you so much, oh. you. And this was this was so lovely. I mean, you're delightful. Thank you so much for having me. And and I want to tell you, I'll I'll say like what my therapist said to me at one point. She said, "I'll stand in the space for you until you can see it." And so yeah. I'm so proud of you. I, oh, I think you. you've done such amazing things already, and you're gonna. I can't wait to see what you continue to do. Me too. And we're standing in that yeah. space for you. Appreciate it. Oh, Steph. I mean, I have to say, do you feel like you and might be our long lost <laughs> yes, brother? Yes. Right. We are all triplets somehow separated. We're the, the same person. I mean, <laughs> we were all think that we're so lucky to have these jobs and it could all disappear tomorrow. And so I feel like this is a moment for Steph and Robin have homework. Do, do, do. Okay. So what is one thing? Because we put you into the test. Mm-hmm. You know, we put his feet to the fire about something he is willing to do. What's one thing we're each willing to do to be more? Okay, I'm gonna I'm more gonna, just more I'm something. Just totally pivot. Um, well, not pivot, but I was walking over here today. Mm-hmm. I was listening to an interview with Jane Fonda, and Jane Fonda is the guest. And Jane Fonda is like, I don't consider myself ambitious. And meanwhile, I'm walking meanwhile. across Broadway. I'm like mid traffic, and I felt like I needed to like stop traffic to be like excuse me everyone like Jane Fonda (laughs) does not like the Jane Fonda like Jane Fonda is a fucking icon. Who's like 80 something still like yeah still killing it still killing it. I felt like my world just like exploded. She was like I don't consider myself ambitious because I always lived my whole life until I was 60 she said where I would just say yes to everything. She was like I just felt grateful to be given a job. Like I couldn't Ugh. believe that people wanted to work with me and people wanted to hire me and so I just was like oh my gosh, of course. Yes, I'm going to do this and yes, I'm going to do this and it wasn't until I 
started making my own thing. I think she said Clue was like a little bit her own, but then when she started making her own movies where she was like starring herself, that was the first time that she was like, okay, like I have to be like a little more careful and care a bit more and like say no to certain things. And it was like training wheels for her to like say no. And I was like, okay, if Jane Fonda, like, I don't know. I mean, I'm going to just try to channel Jane Fonda, I guess, and say no to more things. And in my homework from last season, I've started seeing this like business coach. Yep. She was like, what values do you stand for as a company that apply to like how you work together, how you work on your own, how you show up at events, how you decide which clients to work with, how you decide like what your shows sound like. That was really hard because I think all of those buckets, except for the ones that give us money, Yes, yes. All follow the same values. Yep. Um, And that's just like a reality. But I'm going to try my homework for myself is to take those values and try to like say no to things that don't fit within them, whether that be like an event with someone or, you know, doing a favor for someone or like working on something at midnight, even though I have other stuff to do. Yep. Like what fits within our values as a company and what can I be saying no to? Okay, I love that. Because what I love about that is that it's addressing the fear, which is what we were asking you in to do, which is addressing the fear that has caused you to say yes to everything. I wish people could see Steph's face. The eyes just got very big. It's scary. So that means it's good. Scary means I did good. good. <laughs> okay. You did great. You did great. Okay. What's your um, homework? Other than hold me accountable. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be like, what was our homework? Um, I feel like mine is going to be Mine's going to be maybe the other side of the you in conversation. Mine is going to be in trusting myself that I'm doing the work and that it's all happening because I I live in a constant state of either I'm not doing enough mm-hmm. or I'm not moving it forward fast enough. And that's just like me just constantly moving the goalposts. So I think I think I want it to be that like when that feeling comes up that I'm not doing enough, I'm not where I need to be, that I make like a gratitude list or like a progress list of all the things that I didn't have last year, Mm -hmm. of all the things that have just recently happened. So just like I want to reframe and reset for myself that it is all happening and that I am doing not just what I want to do, but what's right and what's good for me. All right. Okay. All we right. did it. Homework assigned. Check. And if you are out there and you're listening and this is speaking to you, I mean, what's the one thing that you're willing to do to have your work-life balance and to believe that you're right where you're supposed to be at? We're waiting. No, I'm kidding. We, we can't wait. Obviously, it's not live. <laughs> but no, but think about it. Really, think about it. Hey, folks, it's me again. And guess what? I've got some more bonus content for you. Let's call it Where Are They Now? Here's our guest sharing how they're doing since being on Well Adjusting. Oh, and I'll see you on March 19th for our very first episode of Season 4. Season 4! Can you believe it? Whew, I cannot, but I'm so excited. See you soon. Hello there. I didn't realize it'd been nearly a year, but what a year it's been. Um, bit of a change of scenery for me. Uh, I moved out, moved house. I'm now in much better grasp of how I work, which is, you know, the point of me appearing on that podcast was to talk about how much I work. And I still work a lot, but it's more manageable now. It's more in step with what a normal life should be. And it's also getting there. There is actually a process and a plan in place to get it to a point where I'm living life rather than living work which is i think the big distinction i had to make Uh, and i made that at the start this year and it's my goal now to kind of not take a step back but take a step to the side and say right okay this is going to look after itself now and it's it's getting there it's very difficult when you see opportunities come up and think oh wow that's that's going to really benefit me i'm going to all these amazing gigs and festivals but i would have done that had I not been writing about them. And it's all about the distinction of enjoy it at the time and then write about it later and then keep healthy balance going. It's like right now I'm on the late shifts at work, but I'm balancing it right. I've had that period of relaxation, which is, you know, the whole point. And I've got much more of a balance going, which is um, if you told me I'd have that last year, I wouldn't have believed you, but it's getting there. It's a hell of a long process, but it's, it's really taking effect, which is incredible. 
Well Adjusting is an Edit Audio original series. It's exec produced by Steph Colburn and Robin Hopkins. Our producer and editor is Maria Passingham, and our production manager is Kathleen Specker. Thank you to the entire Edit Audio team and to you for listening. Oh, hey, before you take out those AirPods, this show is just for entertainment. If you are in need of help, please, please, please reach out to a professional. Go ahead and get that help. You deserve it.